Today's episode is brought to you by Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the show, go to patreon.com slash Joshua and become a $2 backer today and get early access to the new episodes. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below, but for now, on to today's episode. You're listening to the Augment Experience Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Josh Ravellis. I'm a student, musician, and a gamer at heart. Join me as I sit down every week to talk about all the latest news in the technology, business, and video game world. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. My name is Josh Ravellis. I am your host, as usual, and obviously, welcome back. Today's episode 84 of the show, but before we get into it, we're going to do a little bit of house cleaning first, because a lot of nice stuff, obviously, at the time of this recording, um, it's my birthday. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for reaching out and all the birthday wishes. Um, it really means a lot to me that you guys you know, have been blowing up my phone all day. Um, I really appreciate it, and I thank you guys so much, because... You know, it's just crazy. You know, 20 years of being alive. Um, it's it's just incredible. I thank you guys so much for all the love and support and, you know, just constantly just sending the birthday messages. Um, to me, it's just incredible. Like, I'm grateful, obviously, to God for another wonderful year of life because, you know, life is a very precious thing that shouldn't be taken for granted. Um, you know. I'm thankful for her, all my friends and my family because, you know, they continue to love me. And, you know, I'm thankful for all you guys because you guys constantly keep coming back, listening to the show and constantly keep supporting me. And, you know, I just thank you guys so much for it because it means a lot to me. Uh, from there, obviously, yes, we are approaching 100 episodes and I do have an episode lined up for one for the 100th episode special. And that one is going to be really nice because it's probably going to get a lot of people on my grill. But we'll, it'll be more revealed as time goes on. Aside from that, let's go on to today's episode because that's all the house cleaning I got. So on to today's episode. So episode 84 is we're going to focus on something that I've been very familiar with for a while now. And I've known this for a while. It's just now, obviously, it's becoming more... I'd say more mainstream because of the, we'll get into it, but we're going to be talking about why Nintendo is proving that they are anti-consumer. Now, let me explain. So I have a really good history with Nintendo. I obviously, yes, my first console I've ever owned was a PS2, but I also had at the time after my PS2, I got a Wii. I got a Nintendo DS and I love both of those things to death. I actually, my Wii U, when I got my Wii, I actually got the black one. I got the special black edition because, well, why not? And that was the one that I got as Christmas gift. And it was great. Um, aside from that, I also ended up getting into DS. And, you know, when my DS got stolen, they got me a 3DS for my birthday. And this is when the 3DS came out too. So it was a really nice gift. Um, aside from that, I eventually later got a a Nintendo 3DS XL, the new one, like new Nintendo 3DS XL. And then from there, I just dumped a lot of games into it. And I also ended up getting a Nintendo Switch, which is what I'm at right now. And I have a really good history with Nintendo. I love a lot of Nintendo games. I grew up playing Mario a ton. I didn't really play a lot of Zelda. I played a lot of Mario Kart when I had my Wii. I played a lot of Smash Bros, the Wii version which was uh, Brawl. Yeah, Brawl. I played a ton of Brawl. Um, and aside from that, I just played like a lot of Wii Sports, uh, which is funny having those those fun moments with my friends. Um, yeah, a lot of people got mad during those times. Uh, aside from that, uh, anyways, so where am I going with this? So as I'm going to be talking about an article from Screen Rant titled, Nintendo wins court decision, dis- a decision that continues to prevent eShop pre-order cancellations. So as it goes into it, it talks about in the article, it looks like Nintendo will continue to be impossible or it looks like it will continue to be impossible for Nintendo eShop customers in Germany and Norway to cancel pre-orders. According to a new court ruling, the gaming company has been on both sides of numerous lawsuits for over a year for over the years. 
most recently having a $10 million case against Nintendo, which was originally passed in 2017 and claimed they infringed upon pre-existing patents when creating the Wii controller. Then, be overturned two years later, the eShop itself has also seen some small controversies, with the Nintendo pulling an adult game from the service last year after a lack of adequate censorship. And, you know, it goes on, talks about the other lawsuits, which obviously I know a lot of you guys know the current one uh, with Soldier Boy right now. But going into the main one, so this is where it goes into the main one. It looks like Nintendo is on a roll with their legal wins. Having recently won a case against the German uh, Consumer Protection Authority, according to a report by Nintendo Everything, the Norwegian Consumer Council originally raised concerns about players' inability to cancel their eShop pre-orders back in February of 2018, which eventually led to the German authority taking, uh, taking Nintendo to court over the matter. However, it was officially ruled Nintendo officially ruled Nintendo will be able to continue on with business as usual, at least for the time being. The court decisions, uh, the court's decision has reportedly been appealed, but it will likely be up to a year and a half before any further action is taken. In the meantime, players who pay for and then preload game, preload a game from a Nintendo eShop will continue to be unable to cancel their purchases, even if the game has not been released to the public. This is a stark contrast to the way pre-orders work in other organizations like GameStop, where players can cancel their purchases and receive cash refunds up until the game arrives. The ability to refund a pre-order is something of a complex situation, with the preloaded data on the console essentially meaning that a player already owns part of the product, even if it's currently inaccessible. Truly, anyone who makes a purchase, be it a pre-order or a regular one, should be 100% sure they want they want the product. But if something hasn't yet been delivered and they change their mind, it seems only natural to let them have their money back. Unfortunately, for Nintendo players in Germany and Norway, like it primarily says this for Germany and Norway, it is not illegal and it does not look like it will be anytime soon. So this is a very hot topic right now because... Yes, this is extremely anti-consumer because on one hand, a lot of people gave Screen Rant a lot of flack because I don't think they were doing this intentionally, but just in the way they were wording everything that I know even Rich from Tech USA, he kind of said a very similar sentiment where it almost seems like it comes off as like they're kind of white knighting Nintendo a little bit. And I'll be honest, I love Nintendo products, I love their games, but I'm not a fanboy. And I agree with Rick on this, because I'll critique anybody. The same thing goes with Xbox and Sony, which I'll critique anybody. Like, I like their products, but I'm not going to stand here and just say, oh, they don't make any mistakes. Because clearly this is a very backwards way of thinking. Because when it comes to refunding pro- the refunding process, I, I'm more familiar with Microsoft's refund policy, because I had to do it a long time ago. And they actually made it even better now, which I'll actually go into it from an article from Eurogamer talking about how Microsoft actually updated theirs to be more, I'd say, liberal, where it's more free and more accessible. And like before I go into that, I want to talk about my experience with the Microsoft return policy. And you'll see why it's so crucial, because having a return policy is very, very important because sometimes you buy into hype, you know? Like, that's usually how we are as a society. We usually, most of the time, like to buy into hype. And when it doesn't deliver, we're like, well, this sucks. I want to get rid of it. I want my money back. And, you know, in the normal sense, you can return it, you know? Like, in my sense with, say, clothing. Say I buy a piece of clothes. Uh, It doesn't fit. I tried it on. It, you know, didn't fit. And so I just returned it. And, or say, you know, something happens and it was already defective so i just return and get another one you know same thing goes a piece of technology you know like when i bought my original xbox i bought it from dell and then you know i'm talking about my original xbox one here that i bought it from dell the controller didn't work i had to send it to microsoft they sent me a new controller they fixed it and then the controller not the controller the actual xbox killed itself like a month after because the wi-fi card and it broke So I took it to the Microsoft store and they, you know, I just gave them the Xbox and the power adapter. I kept everything else. And they're like, yeah, here's a new Xbox. Be on your way. I was like, great. This is awesome. Um, From there, you know, say I had a, 
a, a broken controller that I bought from GameStop and it was already broken or say an adapter because I remember buying a lot of those action replays and dude, they would brick. So, like I ran into an instance where the thing bricked like four times. It is absolutely stupid. It bricked four times on me and I had to return it four times and I finally got one that worked. A uh, prime example of another one where I bought a flash drive from Best Buy. The It's a SanDisk flash drive that has USB Type-C and A, so it flips like with a little switch. That thing broke on me four times. Every time I plug it into my iPad, it would just break, and it pissed me off. Um, I kind of feel like I'm going on a tangent, but you know, I'm giving context to where I stand on this because the importance of a refund or a return policy is very key because sometimes things don't work or they suck and you want your money back. Prime example with the Microsoft one, which is why I'm more in favor of what Microsoft's doing because it's what how things should be. And they actually made it even better than what it was before. So a long time ago, probably like a few years ago, four, I don't know how many years ago, uh, I remember when Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm, I don't know if it was... Was it three or was it four? I want to, let me check. Uh, I'm actually going to, you know, do this live and just uh, look up this. Uh, Actually make sure I'm not crazy that it was. uh, Let me see if I can find the one that I bought. Uh, Was it? Yes, it was Storm 4. Yes, it was in 2016. So I bought it in 2016. And when I bought the game, I played it. I finished the story really quickly. I finished it like in like two hours and I tried to play online. The online legit wouldn't work for anything on Xbox. You could not get into a game. You couldn't find people. The game would instantly crash. And so I was like, look, this is a waste of my money. I called Microsoft support. I'm like, hey, I bought this game. It doesn't even work. And I bought it digitally. And I said, can I get my money back? And the guy was really cool. He actually gave me my full money back, you know, everything. And I just told him, look, dude, like this game, the main function of it doesn't even work. Like I can't like this is just unacceptable. And they were really nice that they gave me my full refund after a day of owning it. So this is after I had already played it for a day or attempted to play online for a day. Um, and then, you know, they gave me my money back full refund. And this is what Microsoft had done. Now, granted, I think they've changed it a little bit, but it's still much better than what Sony or Nintendo has. Sony is still a little bit, a little bit more ahead, but Nintendo is definitely a little bit more, um, how would you say, picky. So, these are the terms and uh, terms for for the Microsoft refund policy. So it says games and apps are eligible for self service refunds within 14 days of purchase if you have less than two hours of play across all accounts. DLC, season passes, and add-ons are not eligible for self-service refunds. The game or app must be downloaded and launched before requesting a self-service refund. You must wait for at least a day after the game or app's release before requesting a self-service refund. Uh, Certain Windows 10 apps may not be eligible for self-service refunds. And Microsoft reserves the rights to blot access for users who abuse self-service refunds. So, way, way more liberal because the fact that you can have a game you have 14 days to return it and at the same time if you play it for less than like two hours or say you know prime example you pre-order it and you pre-order it six months in advance and three months in you decide to cancel boom cancel no issue and i think that's what's very important because what some people don't seem to realize is yeah we tend to bind a hype And that's usually what happens. Like a lot of people had this issue when Pokemon Sword and Shield came out because when Pokemon Sword and Shield came out, people were already on the fence. They were like, look, I don't know how I feel about this. And then some people were like, when the game came out, they're like, dude, this is trash. Like, I want my money back. And Nintendo's like, nah, chief, you ain't getting nothing back. And it sucked because a lot of people were mad about it, bro. Like they are like like it's (laughs) i don't even know where to begin on this one because like like i just don't know where to start on this one bud um 
Nintendo just baffles me that they do this a lot. And granted, I get it. Nintendo is very stiff about many things. Like it wasn't until last year when they actually started letting people actually, you know, play their games on YouTube and put videos up about them. They wouldn't let people stream Nintendo games. They wouldn't. They were extremely strict about it. They had their partner program. And if you weren't part of it, sorry, you ain't getting nothing. You ain't streaming or they're taking you down, boy. They're going to get the Nintendo ninjas to come take you down. Um, Aside from that and referring to sending ninjas to come take you down. um, It's crazy because like to me, it's baffling, you know, that they that they still do this, you know, and this is a very bad look for Nintendo because I agree. Nintendo definitely makes a lot of good steps. They've definitely made a lot of good steps forward. And we've acknowledged that the switch was a great move forward for them. Like the fact that a lot of their games are really good on the switch and they're working with what they got, that they're making some ports possible because, you know, they're being smart and they're working with what they got and using it to the best of its ability. But it's situations like these where you have, you know, backwards, like where you go a step backwards, you know, instead of a step forward, which Nintendo definitely, I think when they did got rid of the Nintendo, you know, partnership program and just made it. So, Hey, anybody can stream our games. Anybody can put our game gameplays on YouTube. I think that was a great call that definitely helped the popularity of Nintendo games. And it made it so much easier to, you know, view games and get impressions about it because Nintendo was very stiff about it. But I still think this is, in terms of the return policy, I still think Nintendo is being incredibly stubborn about this because that's not realistic because just because you pre-order a game, say, months in advance, and then more stuff comes out about it and you're like, oh, I don't want this thing anymore, then it's like, oh, sorry, you're stuck with it. And it's like, this is impossible. Like, for example, Steam. Steam obviously has the most liberal return policy you could imagine that... And, you know, it's easy. It's just a simple fix. You just click return and then boom, it's off your it's off your library. And knowing Nintendo and I think even Rich has the same opinion where it's a very simple thing. This isn't like rocket science, you know, and, you know, Nintendo with all the money they got, like it's a very simple thing to do because if Valve's able to do it and Microsoft's able to do it, granted, Sony is a little bit stubborn to do it, but um but we still have to dog them for it because this is very unacceptable. This is very anti-consumer. This isn't consumer first. Like, and I even agree with Rich on this one. It's like Nintendo needs to learn to be competitive because yes, being competitive on a harder front is one thing, but being competitive on a, I'd say, you know, how you treat your customers is another thing because that's a very important factor that a lot of people don't seem to realize. How you treat your customers is the most important thing. There's a reason why companies like Apple are rated some of the best in customer service on the planet because, yeah, they put a lot of attention to detail to making sure you are happy and they make sure that you're happy, which now granted, I've already said this multiple times before that, yes, every company makes mistakes. Apple makes mistakes. Microsoft makes mistakes. Sony makes mistakes. There's nobody that doesn't make mistakes like companies will. It's the it's just how they react and how they rebound from these mistakes is what's very important. And obviously Nintendo is continuing to be stubborn. They make strides forward, but then they take a few steps backwards because they're still being hard headed about it. And especially, which I'm surprised nobody's brought this up because this is very, very jarring for, for pre-orders in general, because think about it. Sun and moon is having an expansion pass coming out. This is very concerning because, yes, granted, I know a lot of people are going to buy the expansion pass because, you know, they added new content, new legends. They're adding a a lot of old Pokemon back, which those aren't part of the expansion pass. Those are actually free. So as long as you know somebody that gets the expansion pass, you can pretty much get the new Pokemon without, or I say new, but it's really just the old Pokemon without any issue. Just your friend trades them to you. And... You know, a lot of people are worried because they buy this expansion pass because they they see some of the content they like what they see now granted the day comes they play it it sucks and they want their money back so you know it's it's definitely a it's a weird predicament i still don't agree that nintendo made the right call here i still think this comes off as very anti-consumer it's not a good look for them at all like at all (laughs) 
We're not going to stand here pretending like this is a great look for them because it isn't. But aside from that, I think overall, Nintendo needs to learn to stop being so stubborn. They should take a play out of Microsoft's book because, you know, obviously they have good working relationships with Microsoft, clearly, because of all the cross-play and, you know, any chance they get to roast Sony about it, they'll do it. Um, but I think it's just, you know, it it's part of the catching up with the times, you know, that, and this isn't a bad thing. Like, it's just, look, keep up with your competition because your competition is being more consumer friendly, even though, yes, Sony isn't doing any better, but they're still doing something. But Microsoft and Valve are definitely being way more, way, way more liberal and consumer friendly than Microsoft, uh, than Nintendo's right now. And especially and Sony. Nintendo's obviously the bottom of the barrel. Sony's definitely above them by just a good amount, or if I want to even use a good amount, probably like decent amount. And then Microsoft and Valve are like light years ahead of them. But it's not hard though. It's like it shouldn't be that way, you know? But aside from that, that's really all I got for you guys today. That I know it's it's a semi short episode today, but it's also very important to understand the context behind it because this is a very jarring thing like this is something that we as consumers cannot tolerate in today's market space because this is unhealthy this is not this is basically a very like clear textbook definition of anti-consumer very very clear this is anti-consumer there is no justifying this if you're justifying this then i'm sorry i don't know what's going through your head but but this ain't it chief this ain't it and you know, I just hope Nintendo learns that, hey, this isn't right. And I hope that, especially with the court case being appealed, that maybe in 2021 that we'll actually see, like, them undo this and not let Nintendo get the win and just, you know, because they definitely appealed it. So I hope that somebody takes a really good look at this and just says, no, this is not right. This is very anti-consumer. You need to change your ways because this is... It's it's like loot boxes. It's just very, very anti-consumer. It's very predatory. And it's just, it's not good for the market. It's not good for the consumers. And I say this all the time. Juan says the same thing the whole time. Hefe says the whole thing the whole time. You need to vote with your wallets. Vote with your wallets, guys. Be smart. Like, if you're not so confident about making your purchase, don't do it. Like, I'm being honest with you. Don't do it. If you don't feel confident to pull the trigger, then don't do it. And because, you know, it's a sad day that with Nintendo, you have to treat it that way. Is like, you know, you got to live with your consequences, the actions of the consequences of your actions, what you have to live with, whether they be good or bad. Like, granted, if you buy a game and you don't need to return it, then great. You don't, you shouldn't care about this. But I wouldn't say that you shouldn't care about it because, you know, maybe there will come a time when you need to. And, you know, tough luck. You know, that's all you get. Tough luck. So I would say, but with your wallets, be smart. You know, I would say continue to voice your opinions about this because this is very, it's a very bad look for Nintendo. And I hope that they realize that, hey, maybe this isn't the right thing and give them a little bit of a push in that direction to make them change their policies and make it more consumer friendly because competition is a real thing. It, Nintendo can easily get wiped out. We're not going to say they can't because the competition is being very fierce. Microsoft is bringing in some heavy guns this year with the next gen console and, you know, all the new games they're bringing. Obviously, Sony is bringing the next PlayStation. You know, obviously, PC gaming is hitting new strides with the new AMD processors. And we're obviously going to get new graphics cards from AMD and NVIDIA this year. So, you know. PC gaming is still becoming more and more popular and obviously Steam keeps getting bigger and bigger in the Epic Game Store. Well, it's the Epic Game Store. But overall, you know, it's an exciting it's exciting times for gaming. Like granted, this is just one of the sour notes that sadly comes with it. And, you know, and I think we just have to vote with our wallets and, you know, let Nintendo know, hey, we don't agree with this. This is not fair. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you guys so much for your time. I love you guys to death. Again, thank you guys for all the birthday wishes. It really, really means a lot to me that you guys constantly keep getting back to me, constantly keep sending messages, and you know you keep supporting the show, which to me, it's great. Obviously, we have a lot of stuff planned for you guys. 
We have obviously the Samsung event coming up in two weeks. So we definitely going to have a lot to talk about when the Samsung event drops. Uh, remember that's February 11th. So anybody interested in uh, watching that event live February 11th, you can find it on the internet and you'll be able to, or even on Twitter, they're obviously going to be streaming it on Twitter as well. But aside from that, thank you guys so much for your time. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Please be safe. I know I'm going to be safe. I'm not doing anything dumb. So please, you don't do anything dumb. But aside from that, I love you guys to death. Have yourselves a wonderful week and I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys. Hey there. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day and listening to today's episode. If you're interested in supporting the show, whether it be financially, clicking the follow button, or just sharing the episode, it all works for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I love you guys to death.